We're still in section 2.2 looking at more uh, information about functions and right now we're going to look at what's called piecewise functions. Uh, piecewise functions have more than one rule that goes with the function and it depends on the x value which rule you choose. So um, this is the notation you would see for a piecewise function and it could even have more pieces. Uh, but this says for f of x is equal to 3x plus 5 when x is less than 0. Right? And then you use the other one if x is greater than or equal to 0. They ask us to evaluate this. To evaluate it, you just have to make sure you're using the right rule for your condition. See, f of 3. You have to look and see which rule is for 3. All right, 3 is not less than 0. 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So you need to use 4x plus 7. So you want to plug the 3 in to the x. And then work it out. So you have 12 plus 7. It is 19. That is f of 3 for our piecewise function. Uh, next we have f of negative 2. I'm just going to slide it back this way a little bit. Right, And you have to look and see, okay, which rule do we use for negative 2? Negative 2 is less than 0, so we have to use the first rule. So we're going to plug negative 2 into x. Which gives us a negative 6 plus 1. Sorry, plus 5. My brain is already moving there. Um, equals negative 1. When we're asked to graph a piecewise function, um, they want the entire thing on one grid. Um, so we can use a t-chart and so first uh, we will do some values to get the first function. Uh, notice this is going to be a line. So we have uh, y equals 3x plus 5 but you have to make sure you're using the right x values. x has to be less than 0. Right. I am going to put 0 here because that's the endpoint I'm looking at. I'm going to put a star by it because I'm going to go all the way up to that point but I can't include it. Right. And so if I have to have things less than that I can do just uh, negative 1 and negative 2 would be good enough. All right, so if I plug in 0, I'm plugging into this. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is 5. So I did this 3 times 0 plus 5. 0 plus 5 gives me 5. Right, then if I plug in negative 1, 3 times negative 1, is negative 3 plus 5 is going to give me 2. All right, and the third one is just my checkpoint. If I plug in negative 2, because two points tell you where a line goes, if I plug in negative 2, 3 times negative 2 plus 5, this is our negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. And I think we did this one earlier. All right, this is going to be a line. This is the point I have to watch. That's as far as we can go in that direction. So let's do negative 1, 2, negative 1, 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, Right, and 0, 5. Don't go over, but go up 5. 
one, two, three, four, five. Now, before you make that point, you have to look and see if you're going to include it. There's no equals underneath. We're going to go up that far. That is an open circle right there. All right, and so we have a line from there down. Okay, that is half of your graph. Okay, now I'm going to erase these. and use the other rule and so it will be uh, for x greater than or equal to 0 we're gonna have 4 times x plus 7 and that is gonna go way off my grid but we want to look at 0 and put a star by it just like before Right, and when we plug in 0, 4 times 0 plus 7 is just going to give us 0 plus 7 is 7. Right, and then let's try a 1. 4 times 1 plus 7. So this is 4 plus 7 is 11. And we can do another one, but it's going to be way off the grid. So we can do 2. 4 times 2 plus 7. This is going to be 8 plus 7 is 15. All right, and I had to choose those numbers bigger than or equal to 0. So at 0, I have 0, 7. So this was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And this is going to be a solid circle because I had the or equals underneath with that one. All right, 1 and 11. So that is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 1, 11, and 2, 15. All right, so I'm over at 2, and I've got, this is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That'll just help us to draw it. And that is the graph of this piecewise function. You have to put them both on the same grid, and when you're doing each one, you have to make sure you're picking the right values. Always use the endpoint, but put a star by it, whether you're going to include it or not, which would be an open circle or a closed circle. We'll look at one more piecewise function to graph, and these are our rules. Uh, the first one is not going to be a line. Um, we know that because it's x squared, so we will have to use more than three points possibly, and we have to use points less than two. Uh, I am going to use 2 again and put a star by it because that's one of my ends. All right, so I have to be uh, less than 2, but I'm going to plug that in. So a half times 2 squared. All right, so you're going to do your exponent before you multiply by a half. So this is 4 times a half which equals 2. All right, we want less than 2. Uh, so if we do 1, a half times 1 squared. Right, 1 squared is 1 times a half is a half. Uh, let's do 0. If we plug 0 in, a half times 0 squared, this is going to be 0 times a half is 0. All right, and let's get some more. Uh, we want x to be less than 2, so we can get negative numbers. 
which is good here since it uh, is a different kind of equation. Let's try a negative 1, a half times negative 1 squared. You have to do the exponent before you multiply, so this will be 1 times a half will be a half. And let's do a negative 2. That should be enough. All right? A half times negative 2 squared. All right? Negative 2 squared gives us 4. A half times 4 is 2. All right. So we have 2, 2. And it is going to be an open circle. So we're going to go up to it, but we can't include it. 1 and a half, 0, 0, negative 1 and a half, and negative 2, 2. Now, this doesn't end there because you could have kept doing uh, negative values. If you tried, um, let's do negative 4. That way we won't get a fraction. All right, we're going to just do it in our head because we're out of room. Negative 4 squared is 16. A half times 16 would be 8. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that gives us a pretty good feel for this graph. This is a part of a parabola. Okay. Right, now we'll get ready to do the other one. The other one is a line. So, all right, so we're going to look at y equals 3x minus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 2. Now, I need to look at 2, and I need a star by it. All right, and this time I'm going to include it. So I'm going to plug it in. 3 times 2 minus 1. So 6 minus 1 is 5. Right? And uh, so we have to go bigger than that. So we'll do 3. So 3 times 3 minus 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. And we'll do one more. Uh, if we do 4, 3 times 4 is 12, minus 1 gives us 11. And this one is going to be a line. You know that because it's the exponents are 1. So uh, 2, 5, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're going to include it because of the equals underneath. All right, 3, 8. And 8 goes a dot past here. And 4, 11. This is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, now we're going to draw. This one is a line. It's only going to come down to this dot right here. That's why I made it first so we could see how far to go. And that entire picture is our graph of the piecewise function. I had one more little piece below that, but I didn't realize it before I erased the first graph. All right. The domain of a piecewise function is always negative infinity to positive infinity. All right. And domain, remember, is how the graph acts going across. So this piece here goes up forever to the left. So that's coming from negative infinity to here. But the graph then picks up right here. So this point is included. It's just not on the lower piece. It's included up here. And then it keeps going forever to the right. So that is your domain. It is always negative infinity to positive infinity. You can look back on the first graph for that. It says use the graph to determine the function's range um, 
a lot of times the graph is the easiest way to get the range and it's remember it's going to be lowest point to highest point and then you can use either of the pictures so the lowest point of both of the pictures so I'm just looking at range the lowest point is zero and I touch it so I'm going to get a zero with a bracket all right uh, this function goes up forever and so and there's no gap in here um, this piece is covered by this side of it so it's going to go to positive infinity I'm going to take a minute and show you how to do this on your graphing calculator it's not going to give you the open circle or the closed circle here uh, but it does include a new button this is not something that you're going to use all the time on a graphing calculator but it is interesting uh, so we're going to do y equals and we're going to do a half times x squared you can do a half in parentheses or you could do 0.5 so I'm going to do 0.5 for a half x squared right now I need to put my condition on there you're going to put a divide line and you're going to put your conditional statement in parentheses right and we want to say x is less than 2 so we're going to put the x your greater than and less than symbols are under the test function which is above the math button so do second math we're looking at our logic symbols we want less than which is number 5 and then I need to close parentheses whoops I need to put the 2 then close the parentheses alright so a half times x squared um, this is separating my condition x is less than 2 and I've closed it All right and I could graph that piece now there you go see you've got that piece of it and it just doesn't give the open circle alright I'm gonna go back in and put the other one in at the same on the same graph so I've got the y equals 3x minus 1 All right now I need to put my condition so it's a divide that you put in between All right and I need the condition in parentheses X All right I need to go under my test menu again so it's second and math to get the button above it alright I want greater than or equal to so that is number four in my choices All right greater than or equal to two close your parentheses enter and now let's draw the graph and it should still have the first one but it'll add the other line on there you go there is our graph